Good day and welcome to the Abe 3411 Agricultural and Biosystems Power Engineering. In this video we will introduce the working principle of external combustion engine or ECE. To begin with, I would like to ask this question, which is more important. Is it power, or efficiency? Same as the BMW M1000RR, or your girlfriend. But I think study first before anything. An external combustion engine, ECE engine, is a heat engine where a working fluid, is heated by combustion outside the expansion chamber, causing the fluid to expand. The expanded fluid then transferred to the expansion chamber pushing the engine mechanism to produce as motion and usable work. The fluid is then cooled, compressed, and reused for closed cycle system, and discarded for open cycle system. Closed cycle system the most common and widely used closed cycle system is the Rankine cycle. It is the basic thermodynamic cycle which has been used for large electric power plants, early locomotives, steam cars, and other machines during the 19th and 20th centuries. This cycle uses both the liquid and vapor phases of the working fluid during the cycle. The work from this cycle is derived from an isentropic expansion, constant entropy, of high temperature and high pressure vapor to a lower pressure and temperature. This low pressure and low temperature vapor are then condensed to the liquid state. The liquid state fluid can be pumped to the system again. A typical arrangement of external closed cycle engine is, condenser, pump, boiler, engine mechanism like turbine, piston, and cylinder. The closed cycle system can be described in four stage. The first stage starts by pumping the working fluid from low to high pressure. This is done by pump, this pump compresses the fluid rising the pressure from low to high pressure but the fluid is still in liquid form this process called isentropic compression. Oh, by the way, scammer alert, there is a disclaimer in the statement pumps compressing liquids, because we've been thought in high school that liquids cannot be compressed, but liquid can be compressed but it requires high energy. At the second stage of the process, the high pressure liquid enters a boiler, where it is heated at constant pressure by an external heat source to change the liquid to high energy saturated vapor. Stage 3, the high energy saturate vapors expands through engine mechanism like turbine to generate electricity and pistons and cylinders for locomotives and industrial machine. When the high energy saturated vapors expand the temperature and pressure will decrease, in this case some vapors may condense. This stage can be called as isentropic expansion. The stage involves the low temperature and vapors will enter a condenser, where it is condensed at a constant pressure to return the vapors into liquid state. Then the fluid again will undergo stage 1 process. So, if you feel that you're like going to burst since your temper is going high, because of many modules to work on with limited resources and references, due to COVID-19 and copyright law. My advice is to go and take a bath, the water will serve as a condenser or cooling system so that you will not turn into bubbles then vapors. Oh my goodness what I am saying. Open cycle system. The open cycle system working principle is almost the same with the closed system the only difference is that, the fluids is not recirculating in the system it means it is being discarded to the environment. This means new fluid will enter the system again. Oh no, scammer alert again, there is a disclaimer in the statement the used fluid is being discarded, the vapors leaving the open cycle system can be recycled. Here are some examples of external combustion engine. The famous steam engine. In early days the rapid growth of industry created a need for new sources of motive power, particularly those independent of geographic location and weather conditions. This situation, together with certain other factors, set the stage for the development and widespread use of the steam engine, the first practical device for converting thermal energy to mechanical energy. This started to the work of the French physicist Denis Papin. In 1679 Papin invented a pressure cooker, a closed vessel with a tightly fitting lid that can find steam until high pressure is generated. Observing that the steam in the vessel raised the lid, he then has a light bulb in his head that using steam to power a piston and cylinder engine. Stirling engine Robert Stirling of Scotland to invent a power cycle that operated without a high pressure boiler. 
The Stirling engine walks by heating air using external combustion through a heat exchanger then the heated air is displaced, compressed, and expanded by two pistons. Small Stirling were used to pump water on farms and to generate electricity for small communities. In this modern world the working principle of the external combustion engine is currently used in cryogenic refrigeration, nuclear ship and submarines propulsion system, and nuclear power plant to produce electricity. I hope that after watching this video you will have an idea what is external combustion engine. And learn the secret to cool your temper, and an idea of always observing because maybe you can be like Dennis Papine. Or by observing you can find the O and E or in short, the one.